Hello everyone. My name is Avish and this is part 1 of the solid design principles tutorial. In this session we will understand what is solid acronym and what are the solid design principles and we'll discuss why we need to adapt to the solid principles in detail. Let us now discuss solid principles in detail. Solid principles are the design principles that enables us manage most of the software design problems. The term solid is an acronym for five design principles intended to make software designs more understandable, flexible and maintainable. The solid principles are a subset of many principles promoted by Robert C. Martin. The solid acronym was first introduced by Michael Feathers. Let's now understand the solid acronym. S in solid stands for single responsibility principle and O stands for open close principle and L for Liskow substitution principle and I for interface segregation principle and D for dependency inversion principle. Let's now take a look at each of these principles definitions. Single responsibility principle. Robert C. Martin expresses the principle as a class should have only one reason to change, which means every module or class should have responsibility over a single part of the functionality provided by the software and that responsibility should be entirely encapsulated by the class. The next principle is Liskow substitution principle. This is introduced by Barbara Liskow and it states that objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of that program. Which means if a program module is using a base class, then the reference to the base class can be replaced with a derived class without affecting the functionality of the program module. We can also state that derived types must be substitutable for their base types. The third principle is open close principle. Open close principle states that software entities should be open for extension but close for modification. If you are wondering what that means, it states that the design and writing of the code should be done in such a way that new functionality can be added with minimum set of changes in the existing code. That means a design should allow a way of adding new functionality as new classes and keeping as much as possible existing code unchanged. Let's now take a look at the fourth principle which is the interface segregation principle. The interface segregation principle state that many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface which means we should not enforce clients to implement interfaces that they don't use. Instead of creating one big interface, we can break down it to smaller interfaces. Let's now take a look at the final principle, which is the dependency inversion principle. The dependency inversion principle states that one should depend on upon abstractions and not on concretions. Abstractions should not depend on the details whereas the details should depend on abstractions. High level modules should not depend on low level modules. Now you may be wondering what will happen if we don't follow these solid principles in the programming. Let's see what will happen if we don't follow these solid principles. If we don't follow these principles, we may end up with tight or strong coupling of the code with many other modules or applications. And this tight coupling causes time to implement any new requirement, features or any bug fixes and sometimes it creates unknown issues as well. We may also end up with a code which is not testable. Further, we end up with duplication of lot of code in the application and we may end up creating new bugs by fixing another bug in the application. Not just these above, we may also end up with many unknown issues in the application development life cycle. By following the solid principles, it helps us to achieve reduction in complexity of code. It also helps us to increase readability 
extensibility and maintenance and it helps in reducing any errors in the application and it implements re reusability it also helps to achieve better testability and it further reduces tight coupling of the code hence we can say that solution to develop a successful application depends on three factors one is the architecture choosing an architecture is the first step in designing application based on the requirements number two design principles application development process need to follow these design principles to make the application robust and performant number three design patterns we need to choose correct design patterns to build the software if you are confused at this moment on how we can apply these design principles in the application development don't worry as we are going to take a look at them in greater details in the upcoming sessions in the next session we will discuss single responsibility principle in detail with a simple example thank you for listening and have a great day